Hi, I'm Mouse. Welcome to the Gustibus. I chose this name for a reason, because there is a wonderful Latin saying, the Gustibus non est disputandum, which I believe is Seneca. And he said, and everyone translates that to mean there's no disputing taste, meaning everybody's got their own taste and you, and you can't really argue about taste. But I choose the more subtle meaning of this, which means there are some things that everybody agrees on. You know quality when you see it. And the same is true of food. And so I want to talk to you today, and Ed wants to talk to you today, a little bit about taste. And then we want you to try a bunch of things, not so that we can tell you what you're supposed to be tasting. That's not, that's not important to me at all. What's important to me is that you understand how your brain interprets taste. Because then you can hack this incredible body, this, is, this body is this beautiful machine. Taste is one of its many hackable interfaces. And you can reprogram yourself any way you want as long as you know how it works. Okay? So. I'm sorry, are you having trouble hearing me? Not like I'm not loud enough already. Um, okay, the motivation for this talk happened um, when Ed and I and a group of others got a wonderful invitation to a hack on in Norway. And from the moment we landed on the plane and our host greeted us with Norwegian chocolate, to our visit to Norway's McDonald's, to the, to the time that we got to try reindeer thanks to Dragorn, um, everybody raved about the food. How good it tastes, how flavorful it was, um, what the quality was. Um, everybody just went on and on and on about the food, except me. Now don't get me wrong. Um, it was great food. It was just fine. But it wasn't, to me, it wasn't anything spectacular. And so I began analyzing that because I analyze everything, and especially when I, I'm a weirdo and everyone else is the same, I try and figure out why. And it occurred to me that the reason I didn't find it special was because I eat that way every day. And so I began thinking a little bit more about it, and I realized I'm a snob. I'm a food snob. And in my defense, I come by it naturally. Um, so was my dad. And I have lots and lots of stories of childhood relating to food. But I think the absolute best example that will tell you what I mean, when you guys went away to summer camp and you went away to college, your um, care packages probably consisted of Pop-Tarts and Doritos and bags of Oreos. Mine contained caviar, blini, and creme fraiche. Yeah. I got a package on my doorstep once that was timed to perfection because the, the figs were absolutely right and it contained figs and prosciutto to wrap around them and a note from my dad saying it's particularly good this year. <laughs> um, so um, while my mother was content to give us macaroni and cheese and hot dogs, um, SpaghettiOs and stuff, my dad wasn't. And I think that mm, a lot of my neural programming is different from most people's. And Ed is a food hacker. So she, she plays with her food. So you want to talk to us a little bit? All right, let me over this way. Hi, I'm Ed. Um, uh, I'm a stepmom, so I have to cook for kids occasionally, and a husband, and who's a fairly picky eater at times. But uh, I grew up in a lot of small towns uh, around the United States. Uh, my father's an agriculturalist, and he grows sugar beets. So I grew up in the sugar industry, and I grew up uh, playing with uh, the food chemistry, and uh, and really just you know whenever I can make different try to, try to make different combinations of food to make things a li just a little bit more interesting, a little bit more creative, and and yeah, I, I like to play with my food. <laughs> I don't really know where else to go with that. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. So what, you, what you're going to get today, um, you're not going to get talks of, uh, a talk on, on really how to make really cool, interesting, fun stuff with food. What you're just going to get is the neuroscience behind it. And then you're going to get to try the stuff yourself. OK? So we'll start with this. Everybody remember this map. You remember? Um, Probably in um, either elementary school or middle school, there'd be somebody um, letting you, you put like paper on your tongue and the paper would have be impregnated with something in, to see where you tasted bitter and where you tasted sour and you tasted salt. This map is a complete lie. Um, your taste buds exist in clusters. And on, on the clusters of your taste buds, there, uh, um, there are chemical receptors for everything that you can taste. 
It's just that they're, they're more dense in certain areas and less dense in other areas, which is why you tend to, to taste sweet more toward the, the, front, um, the front of your tongue than in other places. But you can literally taste every, um, every um, what do we call these things? Fla think flavors. Um, um, all, over, all over your tongue and some of them toward the, the soft palate and the back of your throat which is why when you take a drink wine, you should inhale it first, that sort of thing. So when I began um, researching this talk, I found some very interesting things. The first is that, um, and you, this is probably going to seem obvious to you, taste is programmed as a result of evolution. And what this means is that you are programmed to prefer the foods that give you the most calories for the least amount of effort. And those are the sweet foods and the fatty foods, okay? So that, that gives you um, the highest bang for your buck. When you taste these foods, there are direct connections all right to the brain, particularly for sugar. Sugar is one of the few things that can pass through the blood membrane barrier, which is why when you go and take an exam, it's always a good idea to have had something sh sugar, a candy bar or something like that beforehand, because your brain runs on sugar. Your brain runs on glucose. Um, what happens when, this, when um, things that your, your brain craves, um, well actually, when, you, when you're try having something particularly fatty or particularly s sweet, your brain releases dopamine and serotonin. So you're essentially getting the same exact chemicals as you would get from Coke. Um, and this makes what you, what you eat very important. Because I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about, hold on, hold on for just a second, I need to get something. <laughs> um, ah, never mind. Just a few months ago, maybe not even that long, a man named David Kessler, who used to be head of the FDA under Clinton, um, decided to find out why he couldn't control his appetite, why he couldn't resist certain foods, and he began researching. He went to, to a numerous food, food scientists. He went to um, a number of food producers, commercial food producers, and uh, to a lot of different salesmen, and trying to, just to figure out, and the book is meticulously documented. It's, it's called The End of Overeating. And it's by David Kessler, and I recommend it. It's, um, it's dumbed down for the masses, but about a third of the book is the documentation and the references, so you can actually read the science yourself. Um, but basically what he found out is in the last 50 years, the commercial food industry has been altering the way that you perceive taste. They have been reprogramming your brain for you. And this scares me. If you buy any prepared mixes in a normal supermarket, if you buy low quality meat in a normal supermarket, if you eat at any chain restaurant, a Chili's, an a, a, um, Olive Garden, an, an Outback Steakhouse, if you eat at any fast food restaurant, the balance of fat to salt and fat to sugar has been changed in the food that you're eating. And the texture has been changed. So what's happening now is that when you eat this stuff, you get a very strong hit right immediately so that, so that you begin to crave it more. Have you ever had the, the experience where you've gone to, um, to eat potato chips and you haven't really, you didn't really want them, you saw them there and, and you eat one and then you eat another and by the time you've eaten the third or fourth, you want more? What's happening there is, is that you are, you are essentially setting up your brain to crave this. And the more you eat this, the more you crave. And the really scary part is that the food that you're eating in these chain restaurants is no longer being um, cooked in the restaurants. It is pre-cooked in the factories where they inject it with, um, with more fat, for one thing. Um, usually they'll put in a fat or uh, an oil marinade or, some, or they'll pre-fry it, which, which replaces about 50% of the water with oil. Um, and they also tenderize it in such a way that it doesn't take nearly as long to chew. So, so you get this massive flavor hit, you get this brain charge that says, give me more, give me more, give me more, and you, get, you lose the ability to know that you've eaten. You lose the ability to become satiated. And the, the technical term for this in the food industry is hyper salient. All of the food that you get, unless you cook it yourself, it's, if it's got more than five ingredients, it is hyper salient and it is designed to get you to crave more. So. What I want you to do today 
is I just want you to take the time to slow down, okay? Ed and I spent a lot of time preparing this. Um, we want, and, and we'll answer any questions that you have about it, but we want you to just taste some things, taste them slowly, and figure out what it is you're actually feeling. So the first thing I want you to try, can we open, we need to open the wine bottles. Um, the first thing I want anyone who's over 18 to try, um, okay? Bagnoles is a French equivalent to port. It's the best example I know of to explain to people what happens when you pair a wine with a food because, because it's, it has an immediate result. This is absolutely unimpressive stuff. There's no reason you want to buy it. It is just meh until you pair it with chocolate or with cheese. So I have brought today some Venezuelan chocolate, both dark and light, um, depending on if you don't like it. And what I want you to do is take a sip of the wine and then, um, then you probably won't like it or you just won't think there's anything good about it. Then I, I want you to try the chocolate. I want you to let it melt on your tongue, okay? Chocolate has to melt or you can't taste it. Um, and then I want you to re-sip the wine, okay? Um, and just see how it opens up in your mouth. And it really does. It does this. The best way I can describe it is this. Um, I can't, I'm not the kind of person that can tell you that this tastes like raspberries and there's a hint of mushrooms. The man I'm married to, Ken, and he's really intimidating to cook for. Um, but I can tell you, I know what I like. And I want you to know what you like as well and to understand why. So I am sorry to have to tell you that we have to charge a little bit for this, um, only because we have to recoup the costs. But we were thinking that um, if you wanted to do all the experiments, maybe $5 or $2 per, per experiment, except for the, the, the um, balsamic vinegar, which you can just taste for free. OK? Um, is that all right with you guys? That, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry to have to do that. If I could have afforded it, I would have. Um, so the question now is, how do we do this logistically? How do we get it to the, to the most of you at, all at, um, at, at the best time? So if someone else wants to come up and help us pour, Stevie, you want to come? or? Um, or you know, come up and, and just help us pour, and we can get more, more out for everybody at the same time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you like or don't like. Everyone has their own personal preferences. One of the interesting things about your taste buds is that there, there aren't the same amount on, on, from one person to another person. And certain people have really densely clustered taste buds. And they can't stand things like broccoli or anything that's the slightest bit bitter or even highly spicy or salty. And they're called super tasters. Um, and there's nothing, that, it, it's just the density of these chemical receptors on their tongue that affects that. Um, so if we can just pour. How many are we, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> and I love you all. I think the answer is many. Many. Okay, well, we'll just do our darndest. We are many. We are many here as well. All right. So let's pour about, this is about two sips worth. Okay with you? Okay, I'm going to move these to the front. Um, and as everybody pours, we'll all move them to the front. Why don't you just come up, um, anyone who's interested in trying it, come and get a piece of this chocolate. Um, you know what? Let's put it in a cup. Here's my five. Take a piece of chocolate too or just the wine? Take the wine and the chocolate. Okay. Um, 
Take a sip of the wine, and you'll find that you don't. It's okay, but it's not great. Um, and then, um, and then, let the chocolate melt on your tongue. What? That's like manischewitz. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's 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 totally unremarkable. It's just meh. Okay, anyone This is called banyuls. And the other thing you want to try this with is it's in- brilliant with a sharp oh, awesome. cheese. Um, the other thing it goes extraordinarily well with is like is a rope for or a blue. Cool. Um, chocolate? Well, so, okay. Is someone coming? That's all. Well, well, actually, we're going to have red stained fingers by the end of this. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. It's all tasty. Yeah, so, it's all do you notice stuff. it open up? Suddenly, suddenly it doesn't taste wow. as bad. It is completely different. If we have to, we've got ice cups too. I know, I'm just. Can we take them foreign color coded money that's not for you? I love foreign color coded money. Okay, but that will be an exception to this. Okay, I need two over here. It has hockey players on it. I know, and hockey players are awesome. Yes. Um, they are also chemical receptors. So, so essentially, um, the olfactory um, senses are. are are similar in nature. They just don't. They're just not wired to the same parts of the brain. So, but because but they react at exactly the same time. So and different. If you look at, at a, um, a brain scan under an MRI when somebody is eating something, you'll see certain portions of the brain light up. Yeah, there's still and, plenty. Okay, good. Give, give people more. There's plenty. Of, there's still plenty. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think we've used all the little cups. Are there okay. any more down there's there? There's still another. Do you have any more little cups? Yes. Here's cups. Yes. Hugs to both of
This is kind of like a mob. Awesome. Hey, Dad. This has got a little bit more organized. You do. Okay. And then grab a piece of chocolate. Grab a wine and a chocolate. Guys, there would be... There is no cheese. No cheese. There is no cheese. There is only chocolate. Are there is, I don't know if that's for this or something cheese else. Yeah. The cheese is alive. What you're aiming for, the rest of it's for Kind of sick that I just picked up that shirt, actually. The cake is alive. I'm just curious. Yeah. 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 If you guys over here want to come this way, we've got a decent line too. So if it's we can do all, come either way. No, they're mixed. Two for one, five for all. So if you just want to do this, it's two dollars. If you want to do each of them, you give us two dollars. It tastes like manischewitz to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> Quite literally. You know what though? Yes, they're all the same. Uh, the one, the, the one on the table. That's okay. Just look at the economy. Is that everyone? Are we good? Yes. Let's say we got everyone. Okay, we're yeah. done. Yeah. Everyone good? We good? Everybody get some? All right, now I've got these two. Hi. No, no, I'm pretty good it's at that. It's called Ban Yu. I like it. It's, it's, like it's good with chocolate, isn't it? Okay, well, my pants work like too. <laughs> Try the cheese. Try the cheese. I don't care about That's cheese. That's totally good. It's all through my mouth. Let me just take the ball. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> just take a photograph, please. Well, isn't it in the uh, notes? I, I, I haven't had any. Bring it back. Right when it's empty. <laughs> Doodle. Doodle. <coughs> I guess I'm going to sit up here. Yes, you are. Because we need the help. Okay, next step. I'm in a paranoid <laughs> My, um, my... We are missing... We are missing the... Talk a little bit about chocolate. Yay! And there was much rejoicing. Um, so, chocolate tasting is becoming um, on par right now with wine tasting. And certain sites, in particular chocosphere.com, which I recommend you all go to, um, allow you to, to even purchase the actual manufacturer's tasting discs. This is the stuff that your various chocolatiers will send to, um, or your, your chocolate plantations will send to chocolatiers so that they can decide whether or not they want to buy that, those, chocolate, those cocoa beans this year. Um, I passed you out, I hope you all have one, a chocolate wheel. In typical DEF CON fashion, something went missing, so I was going to give you flavor notes, which were what experts think of chocolate. Um, I have for you five... <coughs> single plantation chocolates. They are all from the same chocolatier, a man named Michel Cuisel. Um, I, I use his cocoa beans to make hot chocolate with. I, I buy his cocoa nibs, I steam them in cream, and then I add sugar to taste. Um, he's one of the world's greatest. And these are his attempt to try and come up with the perfect balance from a single area. So we have Madagascar, we have um, San Domingo, we have Cote d'Or, which, uh, which is um, on the Gold Coast of Africa. We have, um, there's another Venezuelan, and the, um, the third one, I can't remember, uh, the fifth one, I can't remember where it's from, but I'll find out and, and tell you in a second. So what I would like you to do is come and get one of each, um, and if there's enough, you can have two. Um, uh, um, I don't want to take any of this stuff home, so, so if there's enough, uh, what, whatever we have left over after we're finished talking about it, come, come eat some more. Um, 
And I just want you to, to eat them one at a time and look at your chocolate wheels and just see if you can figure out any of those sort of flavor notes. But here's how I want you to eat it, okay? Oops, we got through the manuals. I want you to look at it first. Is it smooth? Does it have little rough spots? Are there, chocolate, are there nibs in the chocolate? Or did they grind it completely to a fine powder? Touch it. What does it feel like? Snap it in half. Because you'd be surprised. Stale chocolate tastes very different from fresh. And, and it sounds different. And you can hear the difference. Smell it and then taste it. Let it roll around. Let it melt. Until the fat melts on your tongue. And that's the only reason why they include something like soy lecithin in a chocolate bar is because that emulsifies the fat and allows it to melt. Um, it has to melt. Then, what I want you to do is check your chocolate wheels, look at any of the tastes, see, what you, see if you can find any of those flavor notes, chew it for a minute, swallow it, and then see if you can find what the after taste is. And then how do you rate it? Okay? Um, is there any more wine left? Um, <laughs> We've got, we've got, no. <laughs> um, so unfortunately it's much more like, um, you'll have to have carried your own water or something with you, I'm sorry. Um, but please, come on up and, and, and try some of this. There are two sets, one starting there and one starting here. They're in the same order from inside out or outside in. <laughs> Up the sides, and we can go, go back in the middle. Just like this, guys. Yeah. Okay. Grab one from each of these tubs and then go back down that way. One from each tub and back Thanks, you guys, for coming and for being willing to do this. Because I'm so tired of people eating at the Hofbräu House. Um, <laughs> Vegas is a fantastic eating city. Um, if people would ever leave the Riviera, um, you'd be surprised. Um, ask, ask Pantera and Tara; they know. Uh, the three of us have been commiserating and trying to get a chance to go out to dinner together. Uh, Firefly for tapas. Yeah. The steak resident restaurant over in Circus Circus, which is amazing. And, and Blue Ribbon sur Sushi. Um, if you're willing to pay for it, you can choose your cut of beef from the meat locker you see as you walk in. They have everything hanging and aging. It's, it's pretty damn amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, Pantera has a few more. Pantera, you want to come? Tell them about some of the places you've eaten when, since you've been here. So here's another f um, food snob. Um, <laughs> All right, if, if you're looking for a good place to eat here, there is Bouchon, which was started by the same person that started the French Laundry in San Francisco, and they have uh, fantastic foods. Um, we had a, we had an amazing chicken there the, just the, just yesterday. Uh, we also went to uh, the shopping mall at Caesars in the main floor. is a fantastic uh, kind of steakhouse. And where else do we go? Is it Joe's? Yeah, Joe's. And the service was fantastic, and uh, they had a really good scotch list. Uh, no boo? I don't know how to get there. You just have to... go to Manhattan. No, if, if I'm in Manhattan, I prefer um, Neil for um, Japanese fusion or blue ribbon for sushi. I'm not that complicated. I'm just saying I know I don't believe in the hat. It was a bad joke. 
No Boo London is my favorite. For this, um, this blue laser pointer, that board will make one of these. Okay? Yes. Yes, it's good. Um, by the way, some new chocolates here. Cho. Have you been on Cho? Um, we were talking about American chocolatiers. Um, I'm sure you guys all know Scharfenberger, right? San Francisco, um, very good chocolate. Have you, have you gotten on Cho's mailing list yet? Um, Cho was started by two dot-com millionaires who just decided that they wanted to, st to make chocolate. They are still in their beta testing phase. So you join up, just go, it's T-C-H-O, and um, just sign up. And for five dollars or so, you get you get these little um, brown barcoded envelopes filled with something, and you're which they think might be fruity or might be lemony or might be nutty or something else. And then you you taste it, and you go back on the website and you tell them what you thought of it. So if if you're interested, Cho's a great place to go, and and the stuff's good. It's damn good. Um, all the things that we've eaten here, and I will include the, the, the expert's flavor notes for this chocolate, um, and so that you can all know, and I will also give you where to, where to get it from and how much you can expect to pay for it, okay? There's more if you want seconds. Actually, you guys, I'm so addicted to this stuff that not only did I bring it for you, but I brought five bars of Cote d'Or, um, which is another brand of chocolate. I brought um, five bars of Zay bars just to eat during con. So, um, but because I couldn't touch this, this was more expensive. So I, I brought some stuff that at least I could eat. Um, okay, number one. You guys wonder why she's so hyper. No, I'm normally like this. Everybody see re real genius? Because I'm 19 and I'm hypokinetic, I'm brilliant, you guys are a little afraid, probably start to think about it, I'd be upset. Um, <laughs> I got this room, I drove crazy, I mean really crazy, that Tigger went in the ambulance and everything, but I don't think that was my fault. So they're going to have to taste the vinegar by dipping. So do we have any other? Oh. Okay, so let's put like 10 of those across with this stuff and 10 of those with this stuff. Okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Every time it goes to sleep, I lose the, I lose the document. Oh, thank you. 
If I ever get rich, I'll just pay for this myself. I don't. I would rather have, have you guys learn this than just have to pay for it. And uh, and keep them separately. You have to keep them separate. Okay. You guys are probably going to think I'm nuts for raving over vinegar. But if you have never tasted real balsamic vinegar, you have no idea what you're getting. The crap you buy in a grocery store, the stuff you get in most restaurants, unless you're paying $50 to $100 a plate, is not balsamic vinegar. Balsamic vinegar is made exactly like wine, except that it isn't fermented. And it is made with high quality grapes. Well, hold on. And bottles this size of the good stuff are aged 100 years and they sell for $250. Okay? What I brought for you to taste is the best I can afford um, <laughs> to, to share. Okay? Um, but this is the stuff we use on a daily basis. This is the stuff we save for people we really, really like. Um, that's the stuff I picked up in the local Albertsons. I want you to try to, to take them both. Um, what I've got are spoons for you to dip in them, because um, you, you don't need that much. Most people that, that are fanatics about balsamic vinegar carry it in tiny vials in their purses or in their, their pockets with silver spoons, and then they dole it out on things. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Um, I know people that drink it as an uh, um, as after dinner drink. Um, this is not what you're thinking of when you're thinking of vinegar, okay? So try the bad stuff first, and then try the good stuff. Okay, who's okay. that? Okay, so bad stuff on that side. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not done yet. Wait. Just thank you. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Are we doing bad and good at the same time, or two different lines? Um, which is easier? Bad here. No, this is good. Bad here. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay. So two, two bads and two goods. No, we'll do five. These are the goods, right? Yes, yeah, these are the cheeps. These are the goods. Yeah. This is all cheap. Okay. I'm going to put those on the outside over there, too. Okay, the all right, so we're going to put bad on this side, good in the middle, bad on that side, more good in the middle. Okay? Does that work for you guys? Good one. This is the bad. So we need to put those. Okay, this is the one. And thank you, guys. I, pr I really appreciate your patience. Um, I know this is kind of disorganized, but they don't give us any setup or prep time. These are good. We want bads first. Right. So, just just dip a spoon in it, um, and then um, yes, get a new spoon for the other spoon. We got Wait, plenty of spoons. Hold on, we haven't gotten the bad out yet. Okay. Here, here's your fifth. Here's your fifth. Oh, you here's the bad. Here's the bad. That's your fifth good. This is, this is my yeah, fifth? This is yeah. Your five? five goods. I got two. I need two more goods. Yeah. Got to take it to double check, right? Six. Okay. So one more good. One more good and one more bad. Yeah. Is it bad? Yep. Yeah. This is the bad stuff. This is that's good stuff. Good stuff. The, the best things to use this in, um, drizzle it on top of, of peaches. We, we mix in with what pancake batter. Um, there's, it's amazing stuff that you can do this. We make a, um, a cooked beet, arugula, um, um, fresh Parmesan cheese, and I can't remember what else is. Oh, walnuts or pecans. Salad. That this stuff is just amazing on. Um, but there are lots of, lots of recipes that you can use this in, and you only use a very, very little. We use about... Um, an eighth to a half of a teaspoon with stuff that we're making. You don't need much at all. This is the bad. This is the bad stuff. The first stuff you'll get is the bad. Okay, it's just normal balsamic vinegar that you get in a grocery store. Now try the good stuff. It's candy, isn't it? It tastes like candy, doesn't it? It's a syrup. Um, <laughs> Alton Brown, um, one of the, the TV food chefs, drinks his out of little glasses like this, little shot glasses worth. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. St fresh strawberries. This is fantastic on str fresh strawberries or fresh peaches. This is bad. So, so just pick any, a bad, any bad. Um, 
Uh, I believe that's in age over 20. This is the good stuff. This is this is about 100 years. Uh-huh. No, because I couldn't afford that. I'd have had to charge it to like $20 just for the vinegar. Um, Are these the same? Both the lot. Yeah, these two are the same. Uh, oh. We, we set them up both ways. Let's go down the same. This is the bad one. This is the good one. Again. You'll notice the difference in the Yep, sorry. Um, kind of I will put up places where you, where you can get this stuff. I, I'll put up an entire um, website, a list of all sources, list of all, all things. You know, bad. bad. Good. This way to the egress. Um, yeah, it should be linked on DEFCON. Um, it's the same way, but they age it in steel, and they age it for maybe six months, and then they, they bottle it and stick it in the store. It, so they can, lit- they can legally call it balsamic vinegar, and it, it may even be made in Modena, but... Um, I'm going to start calling it video, because it's not really bad. Well, if people don't get a chance to know... You notice that one, it just kind of slides right off their screen. They tell me that all that one just sticks. Yeah. It has way more surface tension. Oh hell no! <laughs> Home cooking is almost always the best. See, so that's the as long as you buy good ingredients, no matter what you make is going to ta- taste good, and it doesn't matter if you're making homemade macaroni and cheese or something like that. Um, all this, all the stuff that that you buy in a, in a grocery store, you used to make at home anyway, and it's just a poor imitation of the stuff you can do just by cooking. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. No shots of Yeah. Not that kind of Did you want to taste? No, I'm not in line. You could have. Tell me if you want. You want some chocolate? I can't remember the name. It's inside of Circus Circus. Oh, I see. Uh, yes, yeah, so you go upstairs and ask for their steakhouse. This is the bad one. Thank you. This is my yeah. Okay. This is the video. It's one of my favorites. Not as good. Not as good. Yes. Great. I transferred it. Have you noticed how it, you notice the, 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 um, how it looks on, on the screen? Now turn that one around. I use that to transfer your sticker from my old laptop to my new laptop. You can see how it kind of clings like a syrup. Secret smash. Oh, my God. Like, where's our damn store? Where's our damn store? They actually do. They actually do. But you buy it okay. Wow, that is very different. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. You betcha. Oh, sorry. So is vinegar, is this a regional thing, like wine? If I like uh, French wine, not like French vinegar? Um, real balsamic vinegar is only made in Mississippi. Uh, so you know that you are not eating it. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So do you want the real stuff, uh, this stuff, or even this stuff? I believe we're doing, uh, we're going to be doing, the last thing is going to be the miracle fruit. Yeah, we're going to be starting to show you. Okay. Nothing like miracle vinegar, right? Okay. So, so this, is, this is the stuff that we buy. It's a miracle. It's about $43 a bottle. If you're interested, this is the stuff that, we, that, that, that you're tasting. Um, come take a look at the box. We got this at Zay Bars in Manhattan um, for $44. The, the, the bottle of vinegar will last for six months. It is worth the investment. Um, so you can either pass it around or, or take pictures of stuff. I know many um, local good grocery stores carry this um, because I found it also at De Bruno's in Philadelphia. I have a question. So. How does it travel? Can you get it from Amazon? Um, it it travels just fine because I threw it in my suitcase with, well, no, without any... Um, Amazon would probably have this stuff too. It might. It might. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. We've only got ten minutes. We gotta hurry, guys, because because now's the fun part. Okay. So the, the last thing I want to do is is screw with you. Uh, so when Ed and I first started talking about doing this talk, this was the first thing that came up to, that we both thought of at the same time. Uh, they're in the outside pocket, a uh, front top pocket. And then that's the good stuff. Bad. Good, bad, and good. Bad, and good. I'm the cork screw cap. I think my train is mine. Um, so we're going to have to really hurry this one. This might have to be like a mad rush.
Um, miracle fruit messes with your mind. This is a, a berry grown in Japan. It's very hard to grow. It's hard to get started from seeds, which is why you don't see it much here, even though you can buy, buy them. It's usually sold in tablet form. Um, what I want you to do is take the tablet, chew it up, and let it dissolve on your tongue, and move it around and coat your entire tongue in the back of your soft palate. Don't swallow until you feel like yeah. everything in your mouth has been covered by it. Say it again. Uh, don't swallow after you chew up the tab until you feel like everything has been covered in your mouth. Um, the miraculous in it actually physically changes the shape of your taste buds so that all of your taste buds respond to sweet. You will not be able to taste sour. You will not be able to taste bitter. Um, you're going to be sucking on lemons and thinking it's lemonade. You're going to be eating less lettuce and thinking it's candy. Um, when you try sweet things, the first time I ate a strawberry after I'd taken this, I had to spit it out. It, I'd never tasted anything so saccharine and sickeningly sweet in my life. So come get a tablet and then try any of the foods you feel like trying that we have over here. Grab a bunch of them, grab a plate, put a bunch of stuff on, um, and we'll all go in and watch the closing ceremonies. Do not take the Miracle Berry tablets until after you are done tasting everything else, otherwise it'll make everything weird. No, everything everything tastes like sugar with Miracle Berry, so after you get done with the vinegar and everything, then we'll do the milk. Yeah, we'll do the milk. Okay. No, okay, no, no. Have, have, you, have you had the vinegar yet? No. Yes, we had that. We okay. did that already. Has everybody had the big vinegar already back there? Vinegar? Yes. Okay, vinegar shut down. Okay, good. good. Okay. Just want to make sure. We're going to pull it away. Oh, that's a bad thing. <laughs> so wait, just chew and stir it all around? Yeah, chew it up so it dissolves and yeah. so everything in your mouth is coated by it. Wait a few minutes fill, or wait a few moments. Plates, and then plenty of plates. Go ahead and um, fill them with, with um, salty, salt. sugar, um, sour, whatever, and, and just try it out. Um, do we need more, do we need more tablets? Um, I'm going to go down the line and pass tablets. Oh, yeah, fill that way because you pass them down. Um, and I have more tablets. Um, anything like the the grapefruit is really good, and um, there's some sour candies down there. Um, are we out on that side? I don't know where the cup is. Right she had like a, a new MLM every year to be a member of.
Let's see if we can get you another. Maybe that's maybe. Who needs, who needs Miracle Berry? Um, yeah, you're supposed to let it dissolve and coat, coat, coat the tongue coat completely. The, the chewing is just to break it up so it dissolves more and they can spread it around more. Here's more money. Can I see this? Yeah. Let them try the other one. Um. Goodbye, Tara. There's a bad smell. Yeah, let it coat it completely. You want to coat the soft palate as well as. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, it's a huge difference, isn't it? Have you had, um. Oh, what is that mushroom? Magic? No. Taki? Oh, I probably have it. Yes, yes, it's good stuff. I've got more tablets if people need them. That big, of those that you can get. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, they're all the same year and they're all the same vintage. And because it's, because it's like a port, it's a blue. Yeah. This is not a brown and a bad color. We're just going to throw out. Does everybody have a tablet? Down the entire thing. The entire thing. In one go. Just this chuck. Do we have any more tablets or no? I think we're out of here. Okay, there's a few tablets left for those who haven't gotten it. Sure if you haven't got a tablet. Yeah, make sure they're broken in half. And then, yeah, make sure it coats your mouth good. And then have some tablets. Yeah, it's got to coat your mouth. Feel free to take this stuff into the closing ceremony. Show everybody what they missed. Are there any more tablets or is that it? Oh, that's it. She's got a few and that's it. Alright, we've got a bunch of them. Um, so there's more tablets over here, and there's more tablets. Everyone's got tablets? No. I got this entire line. Okay, you go for it. Thank you, sweetie. You we need more cheese. Yeah, I got them. Yeah. And whatever. Can somebody have a little bit of cheese? I'm taking this one. Also, yeah. okay, who here doesn't have a tablet? I forgot to mention with the miracle berries, I recommend doing the uh, ch uh, chocolates and or cheeses last because it's creamy and it will wipe it out of your mouth. So do the, the citrusy stuffs first and then end with the chocolates and the cheeses. Sorry. Also, feel free to retry the vinegars after you do the Miracle Berry. Yeah, try the bad. Now try the bad vinegar. Yeah. yeah. Try the bad vinegar. Right. You got some of the bad vinegar back over there. 
Over there on that side. I know, check no, that's the, good. the bad vinegar. That's the good vinegar. There's more bad vinegar right there. The bad vinegar doesn't taste so, so bad. Uh, I know online you can afford those. Yes, go for it. I'm gonna. All these are the same. I love lemons and lemons. Yes, it is. I have plenty of Well, it's much less bad. Berries? We got berries. We got berries. They need berries. They need berries. At some point, the guys that I called was like, I love it. Anywhere from $10 to $15 for 10 tablets. And I've been giving you a half a tablet, so I wonder how they could fall out this time. It's about six to eight. Okay, we gotta get out of here soon. I have three things at the Good Vinegar if anyone would like to take them home. One for you. Anybody else? Vinegar to go. You took, well, you know, one from this side and one from this side. Because yeah. definitely. <laughs> right. I'd like to keep it. So I'm gonna make one more. Uh, there you go. It doesn't pay being dishonest for small things. No, it doesn't. Yeah, there you go. Because then you get a reputation and say, no, I didn't do it. They believe you. And then you were talking about Okay, them. we're going to have to pack up everybody and head to the closing ceremony. So come take us up quick. What? Sure. Go ahead. There's nothing on it. There's cheese. Wow. And this is the maker of the chocolate you were tasting. I will put up the photographs of the actual bars that you had and each, um, and, and everything the experts have said for those particular flavors. Okay? I was scared of the but no more. great you're all, cool, you're all very welcome and thanks you guys for coming i uh,